Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about fueling your long runs and making sure you don't run out of energy. So let's go! Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 marathon and coach. And yeah, if you're new here, consider subscribing down below. I really like to bring lots of tips and advice to help you become a better runner. So today we're gonna to be talking about fueling your long runs, how to go about sort of when you're out there, predominantly marathon training, how to get through those long runs, probably usually there on a weekend, and how to get sort of through them, nicely fueled without sort of running out of energy and hitting the wall. So we're gonna break this up. I think we've got about nine sections. So I'll put those up on the screen here that we're gonna get through all sort of the stages of fueling for your long run. So without further ado, let's get going. So the first area we need to talk about is what to do around about one to two hours before your run. You really don't want to be eating anything in that sort of 60 minutes before your run. So you want to be making sure you're fueling up nicely in that sort of one to two hour period. For a lot of people, this is going to mean breakfast um, on the weekend uh, for that sort of weekend long run. For me, I, I'm a big fan of the bagels, bagels with a bit of peanut butter and jam. Probably have about two of those and that sort of sets me up nicely. And yeah, you don't need a massive amount of food here. So yeah, sort of a, a couple of bagels work well for me. Other things that I really like um, are sort of porridge. Um, some sort of cereals, toast, bananas. Um, granola can be quite good, although it can, for some people, play a bit of havoc uh, with your digestive system. So yeah, they all, all those sort of options suit my diet really well um, as a plant-based runner. If you're not, then some other things you could look at, sort of pancakes, waffles, um, sort of fruit and yogurts, um, things like that. Um, yeah, sort of all really good sort of, sort of high-carbohydrate sources to get out of there and fuel your run. And as I say, try and get those down around about one to two hours before you head out. So moving on to number two, we're going to be talking about hydration and getting yourself ready for your long run. So for this, for a lot of people, you want to be hydrating from early in the morning. So when I get up, I like to have a pint of water as soon as I'm st I start the day, just to hydrate your body. Um, and yeah, you also want to be having you know, at least a pint, maybe a little bit more before you head out on your long run. So for me, I'm gonna be putting that, um, make sure I'm nice and hydrated about 30 minutes before my run. Now that can be either just some water, so maybe about a, a pint, pint and a half of water, um, or some of the sports drinks that you, you see out there. So I've just <laughs> got some Tailwind here at the moment, um, which is a good mix. Um, oh yeah, some of the science and sports stuff I like as well. A lot of them are sort of much of a muchness really. So try a few things out and just find whatever taste you like. So we're on to number three. We're gonna be talking about during your run, when you're out there getting it done. So yeah, for a lot of people, you are gonna have enough sort of stores of um, glycogen in your body to last about an hour and a half to two hours when you're out running. And after that, you're gonna probably hit the wall. You might have heard that expression before. It's just when our body completely is depleted of all of our glycogen stores. But through the likes of sort of gels and things that you, like this that you can carry along with you, you can keep those stores topped up and sort of delay that effect from happening. So I'd recommend when you're out on your long runs, around about every 30 to 45 minutes, um, take um, some, some form of energy uh, with you. So yeah, you know, I quite like these goo gels, or I've got these Morton gels as well here. Um, yeah, it just sort of helps keep those stores topped up. Now, I really recommend looking at what your goal race is giving out um, out on the course and sort of experimenting with some of those gels. There is no right and wrong answer with gels. It's, it's a case of sort of trying and seeing what works for you. Now, if you really don't like those, then there are obviously other things you can take along. Maybe some um, bananas. Obviously, you can take some sports drinks as well. You can get some um, sort of jelly sweets as well that you can carry along and just sort of chew down on those. Um, and even some more natural things like dates and raisins as well can be good energy sources. But yes, yeah, so you can take some stuff with you out on your run and delay that effect from happening. So number four is that really tricky question that I get asked all the time is, 
you're taking all this stuff, all these gels and things, but how are you gonna carry them with you? Well, it's, it is a difficult one. There's no easy solution. A lot of the time I just take my SPI belt, uh, which looks a little bit like this, and I can stash, stash a couple of um, gels in there with my phone and my car keys. And it just goes around my waist, and that's gonna be, keep me sort of topped up enough for a lot of the runs I go on. If I'm out on the trails and things, or I've got some sort of much more endurance runs, then I'll take my uh, pack with me, and then obviously you can take out some of the bottles full of liquids um, and keep everything topped up with that. Um, you know, if you're gonna be out there running um, a race, then you probably wanna make sure you've got some shorts that have got zip pockets in. Um, when I've ever, I've done my sort of marathon races, I've got pockets on top of my shorts and I can stash all of my gels in there. Yeah, and that sort of works really well for me. Other options are when you're out there on your long run, then just, you could even just do, say you've got a 30K long run to do, but you've got a nice little 10K loop. I'd still recommend doing that, just doing that 10K loop three times. Leave a bottle somewhere near home, in a bush or something that you can circle back round to. So after every sort of 10K, stop, grab your bottle, maybe another couple of gels, and it's fine just to stop for, you know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, just to take on some extra energy on board. Also, you could ask a friend to maybe come out on their bike with you and they can cycle alongside you and hand you some water and hand you some gels. Um, and yeah, that can be quite good and they can feel part of your marathon training as well. So number five is what works well. Now I think the golden rule here is there is no one solution that is gonna be perfect for everybody. What works for me, might not work for you, or it might work for you really well as well. So the golden rule here is try out lots of different things and find out you know, what is good for you and works well with your body. If you want to know the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm using, then yeah, so race day and sort of things, I use the Morton gels. They are very expensive, so I can't really afford to buy too many of them, but they work well on race day, and I do use them in some of my sort of key training sessions as well to make sure that's all right. Um, the Goo Roctane stuff um, is pretty good. Um, I quite like the Spring Energy Gels for a bit of more of a natural option. Um, so no sort of chemicals and things in there. Um, yeah, sort of check those out. I haven't got any with me right now. Or the Huma Gels are very similar as well. If you like um, some sort of more, if you're not really a fan of the gels, then as I say, the, the Cliff Bar Shop Blocks can be really good. They're little sort of chunks of jelly um, and they sort of work quite well. But yeah, let me know down in the comments, what are you really passionate about? What, you know, what works well for you? Because it's really good to share um, some of the products out there that we work, work well for each other. So yeah, let me know down below, what are the best options for you? Number six is gonna be practice. Now, when we're out there on our training runs, it's never easy to suddenly go from running a few sort of short runs to suddenly thinking about, I've got to carry this stuff, I'm gonna carry some water, where am I going with water fountains? And all of this stuff, it will never be simple on the first few runs out there. You might drop something, things might feel uncomfortable, you're experimenting all the time. But don't worry about it, you know, the more you're out there, the more you're practicing, it will just become a little bit more natural. It's really important to practice, you know, your whole sort of fueling strategy for your big race. So whatever big race you've got coming up, as I say, research what they're giving out at the aid stations, um, or you know, and research what sort of liquids and solids and whatever they are giving out, sort of do your research and then practice with that stuff if you're gonna be using that on race day. With a lot of running, you can never practice enough. So get out there and give it a go, and make mistakes and learn from them. And then yeah, come race day, it will all feel second nature. Moving on to number seven, it's gonna be how the weather will affect everything we're doing out there. So a lot of people, you might have an autumn marathon coming up in 2019. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that's gonna mean training a bit through the summer. Well, it's a stinking cold day here in London today in the middle of June, but you know we are gonna have some hot days out there and they may interfere with your training a little bit. I'd really recommend out, you know, if you're going on the long run in the heat, some, looking at some electrolytes. Uh, so some science and sport gels as well come with electrolytes built in. And also if you're gonna be sweating a lot or you just naturally do sweat a lot, then look at some salt capsules as well. And you can have those um, just sort of spread out um, during the run. Every manufacturer is slightly different, so make sure you read the box. It's also really important to obviously stay nice and hydrated, but don't go out there chucking pint and pint down your neck. That is gonna cause all sorts of trouble. So I really recommend just, as I say, just drinking to thirst. If you're thirsty, have something to drink. If you're kind of feeling okay, then just carry on. And also it's really important to remember that if you're out there training in the cold as well, your body actually is usually using more energy um, when you're running out in the cold than it is if you're running out in the heat. 
but because you're not sort of sweating as much, you don't feel um, the sort of effects of dehydration quite as much. So if you're out there in the cold, really remind yourself to sort of keep drinking, keep staying hydrated and keep fueling um, throughout your run because hey, it just won't feel as natural as if you need to do it. And finally, number nine is gonna be all about the recovery. So after your long run, I know this isn't strictly fueling your run, but I thought I'd drop it in here anyway. So it's really important when you get through the door, within about the first 30 minutes, it's kind of that sort of really important time to get your body nice and refueled and yeah, sort of kickstart that recovery process and the muscles repairing themselves. For me, I really like to make myself a shake uh, by adding a load of sort of berries and nuts and things uh, to the blender and yeah, sometimes chuck in some of the recovery uh, powder things as well and just sort of blend that all up and get that down as quick as I can um, and also, what I've found is a lot of elite athletes especially rave about chocolate milk and how good that is as well. Yeah, you can buy the powders in the supermarket or just buy it sort of ready made. Um, there are obviously dairy versions or um, sort of vegan versions out there as well. Um, yeah, so recommend checking that out. I normally have a carton in the fridge ready to go to kickstart that re recovery process. So there we have it guys, that is my, there are all my tips and advice for out fueling on the long runs. And I think it's really important to say in 2019, there are so many different options out there, loads of different diets that we all sort of cater for or we think are the best. I don't have all the answers for that, but yeah, let me know down in the comments about what you do for fueling on long runs, because yeah, as I say, I don't have all the answers and I'd really like to hear what works well. For you as well and also feel free to ask me any questions down below if you feel there's something i've missed out on then yeah let me know down in the comments and we can have a chat about everything down there and finally of course thank you so much for all your support um, in the channel the likes and the shares and all the comments they really help to build grow the channel people that are buying hats and these uh my new sort of buffs as well um, they're, they're all going crazy at the moment so yeah thank you so much for the support that you give to the channel and yeah maybe i'll see you out on the start line or out on the streets of london or anywhere around the world we'll see and we'll out, get out and we'll do some long runs together right guys thank you so much for following along and i'll see you in the next one